So I've always believed that saving massive amounts of time is not one major effort, but a series of small improvements that add up. And you can find these improvements with a handful of Mac apps. But instead of randomly choosing Mac apps to work standalone, creating an integrated workflow works better. And today I'm going to show you four of these amazing ones I can't live without and one more bonus one that works in tandem. So these days I find myself reaching for a number of apps as part of a single workflow rather than relying on one to do everything. More apps do offer more choices with a significantly better user experience. But this also means more keyboard strokes and more mouse movements. So one way to reduce keystrokes and mouse movements is by using an app like Custom Menu 3. So instead of digging into your finder or into the launchpad, you can get a floating menu to pop up right where the mouse cursor is. And all of this is possible with a keyboard shortcut or in my case, a simple click with this device. The keyboard shortcut itself is customizable and you can create groups and further break down your apps, your folders and your files with a separator line. You can also add in an emoji to your group and that will enable you to recognize your apps, your folders and files extremely easily. So when you access the menu, you can choose what you're looking for with incredible speed. Just do this for your favorite apps that you download. So I find it's really convenient to use the menu first and then the app dock. And then if I don't find the app that I'm looking for, I either go into the launchpad or use Alfred or Raycast. But if I find myself using the app a few times, I just add it into my custom menu. I also find myself using similar apps for different purposes. For example, if I want to zoom in into any one of my screen recordings, I choose Screen Studio. Otherwise, it's CleanShot X. So these come under the same group and together inside the same separator line. There is a setting to keep recents and an application switcher, but I've switched that off for now and I'll look at it later if I do need it. So now that you've selected an app to work inside, there is another app that does the same for navigating the menus from right where your mouse is. And that app is called Menuware and you can access it with a shortcut function and right click. You can customize that shortcut to your choosing, just like the previous one. If you access the menu at the top, you feel that each one of the drop downs is individual and independent. But when you do that with menuware, you'll feel that the menu actually unfolds like an accordion document and the traceability is right there in front of you. You can drill down on the menu with either the mouse or the keyboard. That's the arrow keys I'm talking about. I also love the fact that you can adjust the text size and the display. And you can also look at it to adjust the light and dark mode that's already set or leave it at the default mode. And it doesn't stop here. There are a ton of other customizations like hiding shortcuts or inactive items. Let's talk about two other apps, the little bookmark box and bumper. So while we've covered apps, files, folders in greater detail, there are two other things that I access frequently that I haven't covered. The first is a quick access to the web pages for which I use little bookmark box. Now this app allows you to group your web pages into boxes. Let's first understand how boxes are organized. So each box can house multiple web pages and you save a web page by simply dragging the web page into the respective box. Later on, you can move the web page to another box if you decide to reclassify it. I assign each web page with a note. So I can just refer to the note and I will know what the web page link is all about. And each web page can also be assigned a tag. For example, each mailbox URL is tagged as mailbox and the individual ones are given a short name. Now what's interesting is that you can search for this with the URL or part of a URL, the tag name, the title or the note. So when you double click on the link, it opens up your default browser. And this is where I have a party trick. So I use an app called Bumper that allows me to choose whether I want to open the app in Safari or in Chrome as the alternative. So this means that I have a web link that will work with any of my browsers. So I don't have to keep saving them in each one of my browsers separately. The second one is quite interesting. It allows me to access a quick access of Notion pages. But when I do the copy of a Notion page link, it'll copy it as an HTTP link and will automatically try and open it in the web browser. But then the party trick also is that I change the URL link to say Notion. So this feature is quite handy to access all of your favorite Notion pages. Now you might ask, where do I use this? I find this particularly relevant if you're having a conversation with a client say, and you're accessing the page directly when you're in the midst of a Zoom call. There is one more thing 
that we didn't cover. And that's shortcuts or hotkeys, as we like to call them. So each app has a ton of shortcuts that will benefit us. But there is no standardization. And often I feel that the same shortcut is used in different apps. And to complicate things, if you use custom hotkeys that you create using an app like Keyboard Maestro, it'll mean you'll have to reconcile hotkeys that you've already used. So I use a small utility app called Shortcut Keeper. And what that does is it saves my frequently used shortcuts or hotkeys. Just think of it as a library to use in every app. Your favorite ones that you want to learn about and refer to that once in a while. What's more, you can also search for it. Let's say you want to search for shortcuts that use Shift and Command. You can type away on the search bar and it'll show you this. You can also see it as a symbol instead of the word by just clicking here. And you can still search for it in the same way. What's more, you can invoke it with a global hotkey as well. I meant the app. So it can also draw your attention to conflicts that arise between different apps. And it's also a nice system to memorize them, code them into a device like a Stream Deck, or know when not to assign them to a custom keyboard shortcut like Keyboard Maestro. What's interesting is that when you've memorized them, you can also check them off. For more such incredible videos, subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon to stay notified of new videos. Till the next video, adios, amigos.